No matter if you're rocking freshwater lakes, rivers or the archipelago, you will find a pike lurking in heavy weed like this during a large percentage of the year. But one of, if not the most frustrating things when fishing is when you get that perfect cast, you start reeling, get ready to set the hook, only to get caught up with salad all over your lure. You have to retrieve it all back and do it all over again and hope not to get stuck. Well, that sucks badly. That stops us from reaching those pike. But how do you fish this kind of heavy cover without getting stuck all the time? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna discuss today with these five tips for catching these uh, weed line warriors. Let's start with number one. All right, so the first uh, tip or the first uh, discussion point is gonna be lures. Because that, I would say, is the most crucial detail when it comes to this kind of fishing, to have the right lure. If you would throw any of your normal lures, you know, there are treble hooks all over the place to maximize the hookup ratio, but when you put these guys in a piece of salad, you will get caught up no matter what you do. So we're gonna leave this one in the tackle box today, and instead we are gonna use uh, lures and hooks, more specifically designed for fishing in the weed. Some are more weedless than others, I would say, but they have a few things in common. I would divide these uh, weedless fishing lures in a few different categories. I haven't brought all of them uh, today here, but I'm gonna show what I have. And let's go bang on the target with the lure type, hook type that I use the most for targeting these uh, weed line warriors. And my number one lure type for this kind of fishing is uh, soft baits read on an offset hook like this, a weedless hook, which uh, looks like this. I guess most of you are, are already familiar with this, but you have a, a big single hook that you thread through your lure. So it comes up like this. This way you can fish it through the weed. There's not much that can get stuck, but when that pike comes and attack it from behind, he will pinch the lure down, expose the hook, and uh, you know we will be able to hook that fish. Like I said, this is the, the lure type and technique I use the most for this kind of fishing because it's so versatile. You can more or less rig it on anything. As long as it's uh, not too big, uh, then it gets hard to hook them. We also have more traditional lure types for this. Uh, for example, the spinner bait has been used uh, for decades while fishing in the weed. It comes in every size imaginable. This is quite a small one for both the uh, pike and perch. But it looks like this. You have a single hook and then you have a metal arm like this with two, one or two blades. And this arm actually does a great job preventing any weeds slip onto this single hook. While it's still very easy for the fish to attack it from behind and, and get stuck on this uh, nicely exposed hook. Well, what more do we have? We have shutter baits. These ones are not fully as weedless as the offset rigged soft bait or the spinner bait. You can still fish it in quite heavy cover. You have one single hook which is hidden quite well by this big blade in front here. And if you fish it close to the bottom, you can more or less bounce it off quite easily. So not fully weedless, but still quite. If the fish are feeding from the surface, we have a bunch of lures suitable for that as well. Of course, you could use a traditional popper or, or walk the dog lure, as long as the weed is not going all the way up to the surface. But if you have lily pads, for example, or this kind of stuff that we have here, going all the way up to the surface, even these guys will fail you. So then you need some kind of weedless topwater lure, like a frog or something like that, which looks like this. This lure type is called uh, like hollow belly frogs. These are soft, made from soft plastic. You often have a big double hook going through the lure like this. It works basically like this offset rigged soft bait. The pike will attack, expose the two hooks, and you will be able to hook them. These are the weedless lures I've brought today that I use personally, but there are also, you know, you have spoons. I don't have any here, so insert picture here where you have a kind of metal arm protecting the, the single hook from getting caught in the weed. Those work great. I actually caught my first uh, five kilo pike on uh, this type of lure. And lastly, we have some, uh, you know, kind of high tech solutions like the hide hook, uh, which kind of combines some of the ideas from all these lures. Uh, you have two hooks uh, integrated in the lure and the hook points are kind of hidden within the soft plastic or the rubber. But when a fish takes, those hook will come loose and you will be able to hook the pike. I caught some nice ones in the past on that lure. I have no idea why I didn't bring any today. But well, I think it's time to get down to the actual fishing. See if we can even catch something, you know? Gonna start with this offset rigged flat nose shad in a color which I designed in Photofish. And if you're not familiar with that, that's uh, a tool we launched where you can design your own lure color and actually order them. So if you want to try that out, hit the link up here and that will take you to, to the place where you can design these guys. But now let's start fishing. Okay. 
this uh, kind of fishing is quite special compared to like when you're fishing pelagically over deep water you know that everything you feel will be a fish whereas uh, in this fishing you know you're bumping into stuff all the time I mean, I mean you can't set the hook for every piece of grass that you're hitting so you need to stay a little bit more calm and usually when they come out of this weed to attack the lure there's no hesitation whatsoever so they're not gonna not know that you had a bite this is one of those places where you would not be able to fish more or less at all with a normal lure or a normal hook you would simply get stuck all the time so even though you lose a few more bites on uh, this type of lure this type of hook it's definitely worth it oh there we had a whirl look at that exactly when talking about it we get the first contact the pike whirling behind the lure but i didn't really feel any any bites like that moving on and this is the salad we're fishing today i'm not a you know latin name guy so if you know the name of this particular type of weed let me know but this is the stuff that we have a lot of here in the baltic sea and the pike seem to like it we're now in late summer or early fall fishing a big shallow bay like this so here's one for demonstration you can see on the weed over here cast this one right into this shit now we'll see if we get caught up with weed or not even though i bump into them all the time i'm not getting stuck one thing that i hear all the time when talking about these lures or showing these lures is that yeah sure you can fish them in heavy cover but you're not gonna hook the fish as good as with a treble hook anyhow like well no but let's say that we have a pike here how are you gonna catch it otherwise they want to have a small chance of hooking it or no chance of hooking it and believe me i mean some people say that yeah but only the small pike live in the weed but during some periods of the year in some waters you will find really big fish on this kind of place too that's uh, also another little bonus tip i mostly see people use these lures uh, during summer or at least in warmer water but uh, i've had some great fishing in early spring winter and late fall and i just never go fishing without bringing this uh, lure type along oh miss one miss one miss one well there we go first contact of the day well i guess that brings us to tip number two that's about how to set the hooks when using these lures and i realize you can't really take me too seriously now when i just missed the first bite of the morning when using this lure type you want to keep your rod tip pointing towards the lure and then when a pike attacks there is a good thing actually to wait for a split second until you actually feel the weight of the pike before you set the hook there i had one oh i had one again what the heck went for it twice ah oh, now well that's quite a way to demonstrate how to set the hook for these fish not i just lost the second fish on this flat nose shad which i think was quite small so change of tactics gonna try this one now instead like i said a good thing when using these uh, offset rig soft baits is that uh, usually when you miss them they don't feel the hook and might take again much more often than when using treble hooks so let's try Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> he was still there. Bam! We have the first fish of the morning. First loss on that Stratos Chad, but it didn't feel the hook since we're using this offset thing. So this guy gladly accepted this uh, Fox Rage spinner bait. Oh, they are so strong. This is actually my perch fishing setup, the Revo X combo up to 30 grams. But it's so fun to catch pike on it too. That's how you do it, folks. First missed it on this one, but uh, since it didn't feel the hooks, it didn't do anything because then he gladly accepted this spinnerbait as I presented it to him. I think it was the first cast, no monster fish by any means, but it's the first one of the morning. Super easy to unhook with this one single hook. Well, uh, let's put it back. Just look how perfectly camouflaged these pike are. He really wanted to hide in the weed. <laughs> he went into this stuff. Well, we had to downsize, we had to sheet a little bit, but well, it worked. All right, let's move on to tip number three. And for this, we need to 
put those uh, weed listeners down actually and discuss you know what to do if for any reason you don't uh, want to use these uh, weed listeners then there are a few things to keep in mind if you want to use your normal you know treble hooks lures this is another flat nose shad designing photo fish normally you want to make as long casts as absolutely possible to maximize your reach and uh, cover as much water as possible but on places like this i know that if, if i would make a cast as long as i can in this direction i would get caught in weed right away so instead what you should do is you should have your costas on you know polarized uh, glasses so that you see properly down into the water that will help you see exactly where this weed is and where it isn't and that way you will be able to see where the pockets are and where you can cast or not and also not necessarily making as long cast as possible because if you get caught in weed over there there's such a long way back for you before you can take that grass off the hook try to see where you have those pockets and the edges of the weed make short precision casts and uh, this way you will do fine with your normal treble hooks as well i'm gonna try downsizing a little bit to this uh, monkey shad 14 centimeter still fishing it on a treble hook so let's see trying to fish it right outside the heaviest weed there we go yes downsizing worked she totally smoked that monkey shad this is the thing i was just gonna start talking and explaining that this is the thing with these offset rig hooks oh, they are great in heavy cover and even though you might lose a little bit of a fish you also have a chance to hook them but on places like this where you have a little bit of weed with but with still with a lot of pockets in between then there's no point to use these uh, offset hooks really so then it's much better to, to go over to these uh, treble hooks. But man, was that a hard take. She absolutely killed this one. A lot of fun. Love this color for clear water fishing. Ice shad with a fully transparent belly and some silver glitter in the back. Back into the weed, you go. You know what to say. It's not about the size of the pike in the fight, but about the size of the fight in the pike that matters. That pike sure could fight. I'm gonna go back to weedless. And while we're entering this bay now, let's uh, talk about tip number four. And that is to keep your eye on what direction you have the wind or the currents. Because it's not the case here, but sometimes you will have all the weed lying in a nice same direction like this. Especially in rivers, for example. And when you have those situations, let's pretend we have that now. That all these weeds would be pointing in a certain direction. Then my tip is to cast straight against the wind or along the wind or against the current or along the current it's because you'll get snagged much easier if they're lying like this than if they're lying like this. I'm not sure if you're understanding my point here but uh, well that's a, that's a good tip to try to present your lure along the current or against the current. Not only will your lure slip through this grass easier, you will also, you know, when you have a current in a river or by wind, very often the pike will be positioned with the head facing the current. It can't be swimming backwards like this against the current. It has to swim against the current with his head facing where the current is coming from. And then you will have a much better chance to make that pike bite if you present the lure so that he can see it like this. Then if he stands like this, uh, compensating for the current, and then all of a sudden here comes a flat nose bumping his ass. Then it will be spooked before even seeing the lure. So that's actually a good overall recommendation to uh, actually cast against the wind. And now that was tip number four. No! Oh! No! That was quite a nice one. Cast it up, bounced it on that rock. I was just watching that lure as it came toward the boat. And then BAM! Oh, oh! It came again. It came after it. It opened its mouth and then turned. That was a nice mouth. I'm gonna present something completely different. A shadow bait. Mega bass wild header with a natural juvenile. That fish was close to a meter. Oh! Uh, uh! Did you see that take? Did you see how she smoked it? Well, it worked to change blur, but I failed. You know, sometimes when you're lost for words, now I'm lost for sounds. I don't even have a sound to match my feeling right now. First uh, missing it on this uh, flat nose shad, then changing over to this uh, shadow bait, that little juvenile thing, and getting the bite of the gear in the surface. 
and yet I miss it. It was a nice fish folks, it was a nice fish. We're talking not really a meter but just below which is a super big fish for being these waters. Soon nine o'clock time for breakfast with the family. I have mixed feelings about today. But I've caught some fish but I've lost too many fish both on the weedless and wood travel hooks. There we go! Yes! My alarm just rang and told me to go back home! Whoa. And here we have the last pike of the day. Ah, yes, yes, yes! Thanks for proving that it's not uh, completely impossible at least to hook something with these hooks. Oh yes! Oh. Well, that can happen folks. I almost count that one as landed. Feels good, we managed to hook it at least. We're gonna make a few last casts of today, but before we do that, let's cover tip number five, and that is regarding gear. And well, it's not that fussy, but overall my recommendation would be not to go too light for three different reasons. First of all, the hooks of these big offset hooks are quite, you know, thick. If you have too light of a rod, you won't be able to pinch this one through the mouth of the pike. Well, I know I'm not the person to talk about tips for improved hookups and so on, but you have to take my word for it. So uh, that's the first reason. The second reason being that with a heavier rod, you will be able to twitch the weed off your hook much easier than if you have a soft rod then you won't be able to make that sharp and hard twitch required to cut through these weeds then you will need a fast quite heavy rod to sharply twitch off that weed the third reason is that when you fish in really heavy cover with a lot of salad in the water you might need to put some really heavy pressure on that fish to even get it up from the cover we're not talking like extremely heavy stuff this is my gator small bait rod up to 110 grams which is considered to be quite a light-sized uh, pike rod here in sweden this is perfectly fine 